Yes. So, so what we see is that is that investor decisions are in primarily emotionally driven. Mm -hmm. They they tend to they tend to buy high mm -hmm. and sell low consistently. So so when when we study the returns in the marketplace, what the average investor is earning, what we see is that in a marketplace that earned ten percent, simple buy and hold of the S and P five hundred would yield a ten percent rate of return. The average investor in that time frame is earning closer to two percent per year. This is over like a twenty year period, right? Yeah, actually it's ten year rolling periods. Okay, ten year rolling periods. So okay. so if 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 you take those ten year periods um, and add add the newest year and take out the oldest year, yeah. the number doesn't change. Okay. The, Not very much. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. The the rate of return of the S and P might go from ten to ten and a half or ten to nine and a half. But the average return of the investor never goes above three and slightly below two in many time frames. Okay. So they're never able to overcome that emotional problem of buying high and selling low. So as you spoke, Mike, it's, mm. it, takes, it takes buying and holding the marketplace um, through good times and bad. Uh -huh. And that's what we're about. Now also, a good fee-only advisor is providing a lot of other services in addition to just asset management. Yeah, thanks for saying that. Our, our primary marketplace is helping clients coordinate their estate and income tax planning with their investments in cash flow. So we're not just out there doing investment management. We're looking at taxes. All of our clients that we share, Mike, by the way, we share a lot of clients, Mike and I, have <laughs> known each other for 25 years, I think. Um, so. So for all of our clients, I call you up and I say, gee, I've got a long-term capital gain or loss, short-term capital gain or loss. Should we be harvesting, taking advantage of those now in, in our client's situation? Mm -hmm. And then we go to the client and get the client to agree with what we're going to be doing. So we coordinate all of that complex tax and investment and cash flow problems um, with the other professionals on the team and the client. We work for the client. We don't work for, we're not trying to sell product. We talked about uh, a client situation recently that, that I wanted to bring up because, you know, a lot of people are thinking, oh, you know, because for one thing, a lot of your uh, income, frankly, it does come from your asset management fees. Yes. And then you sort of throw in these additional fee uh, items uh, uh, sort of, you know, as part of your overall service. And so they don't see the correlation uh, of what you're providing to them uh, and, and what they're really paying for in addition to the asset management. So specifically what I'm getting at is I have a client that was getting ready to retire. And so you brought up the issue to them, well, do you think this is a good idea? Maybe you m might look again, are you going to be losing your medical insurance coverage? Yes. <laughs> Yes, I, I remember that situation. So, so it was a surprise to this 60-year-old that he was going to be uh, um, um, putting himself up to be uninsurable between the ages of 62 and 65. So at age 60, he was going to, current age was 60, and he was planning to retire and go on COBRA, which was yes. a guaranteed benefit right. of health insurance coverage for he and his wife. Um, but that only lasts 18 months, mm -hmm. at the end of which time he has to go out and buy individual insurance. And what I offered was that uh, he suffered a risk of becoming uninsurable over that 18-month period. Yeah. First of all, he's older, changing lifestyle. He might become uninsurable, heart attack, high blood pressure, whatever problem could arise. And in 18 months, when he goes out to get individual insurance, he couldn't get it. Uh -huh. So all of his net worth that he'd built for retirement could be spent down on just medical claims. Right. And what I, what I suggested is that the client take on an individual health insurance policy during that 18 months instead of the COBRA mm -hmm. in an effort to give him individual guaranteed protection up until the age of 65. Right. So and 65 yes. is when you get your Medicare coverage. And so, yes. Right. And the other thing related to this is that it's also an area that's sort of under change because of the health care reform uh, that we've got going on. And so um, eventually there's going to be more choices and guaranteed issue of, uh, of more medical plans. Of course, it's going to mean probably that we're going to end up paying more for medical insurance. Uh, but anyway, but the point is, is that 
to raise these issues uh, for the critical uh, uh, parts of life, you know, when we're facing retirement or a job change or whatever, you know, things to think about uh, is a really important role of the financial planner and uh, for people to take advantage of that, again, as part of the overall service that you provide. Yes, thanks for, thanks for saying that. We think that clients who are willing to hire a fee-only financial planner will do much, much, much better with more peace of mind okay. than clients who do not. All right, so Craig, in this asset management area, I, I get this from some of my clients, you know, when I talk to them about the idea of working with a fee-only planner, and they say, well, well, everybody seems to tell the same story. Uh, diversify and hold your investments long term what's the difference so what's the difference you know if, uh, if, if working with a guy at schwab as opposed to the fee only planner when they're basically they're telling me the same story well i'll compare myself to a wall street broker okay um, and and the, the broker's business when i say wall street i'm talking about merrill lynch dean witter that mm -hmm. kind of thing yeah uh, um, excuse me new name is bank of america merrill lynch okay uh, <laughs> Or is Lord. it U.S. government? I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to keep track. Um, so so um, um, their, their job is to sell product. Our job is to help you accomplish your goals. Their, their job is not to minimize the costs. Mm -hmm. Our job is to minimize the fees and costs mm -hmm. that you pay. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, what they sell, they have no vested interest in performance for. Um, so, so they're apt to sell a product that, that may not be the best for the client, mm -hmm. but will provide for, for them, the salesman, salesperson, what they need to stay in business. Mm -hmm. um, in contrast to the fee-only planner who are, who are going to be offering advice and counsel and no product sales. Okay. Make you an informed decision, the investor an informed decision maker. Okay. The, the difference in performance between the brokerage world and our team at the Family Wealth Consulting Group is significant. What we see is that there are no actively traded mutual funds that the brokers sell that have outperformed the mutual funds we use in our risk managed portfolios. Mm -hmm. So got lots of track record performance to demonstrate that. but but. But it's real clear that the brokerage world is not outperforming a simple buy and hold of the marketplace in contrast to the, to the fee-only planner, particularly at our team, where we are able to outperform at lower costs with less risk. Okay. Index funds aren't sexy. I can understand individual stocks better. Why should I favor index funds or passive investing over timing and buying and selling stocks? Yeah, that's right. <laughs>